Hello and welcome to video lecture series in political science. Today we are going to discuss chapter 1 titled as Cold War from your 12th class political science textbook Contemporary World Politics. For understanding we have divided this chapter into 6 parts. We have begun by general introduction to world politics and how world politics is different from IR or international politics. We have also learnt that how various events in this book are to be learned or seen in relation to one another. We have discussed about how the US entered the second world war after attack on Pearl Harbor and how second world war ended after dropping of atomic bombs on Japan. Today we will discuss about cold war and the Cuban missile crisis. So far we have learned that after the end of second world war the world got divided between two rival camps the division between the US and the USSR. This division between the two rival camps was based on the ideologies of capitalism and communism held by both of them respectively, US advocating capitalism and the USSR advocating communism. Now in the process of this rivalry, both of them attempted to influence countries, smaller countries to align with them, align means to stand with or believe in their ideologies. Both of them were constantly building up their military might as well. The Cuban Missile Crisis is one of the events during the Cold War that could have actually resulted in another war, that is the Third World War. What is this Cuban Missile Crisis? Let us understand this event in detail. What happened during 1961? The leaders of the Soviet Union were concerned that the US will invade communist Cuba. Cuba which was ruled by President Fidel Castro. Where is Cuba? Cuba is a small island nation near the east coast of US and it was a communist country and it was a close ally of the Soviet Union. Cuba used to receive financial and diplomatic aid from Russia. Now as you can see in the map, Cuba is quite close to the southern eastern part of the United States. It is in the Atlantic Ocean. And as you can see in the picture, these are the leaders of the three nations involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis. This one is Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro was the authoritarian leader of Cuba and he was president of Cuba from 1976 till 24th of Feb 2008. This is the picture of Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev was premier of the USSR during the Cold War. And finally, you see the picture of John F. Kennedy, who was the 35th President of the United States. He was the President during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev decided to make Cuba a Russian military base in 1962. What he did? He decided to place nuclear missiles in Cuba. The US came to know about the placement of these nuclear weapons in Cuba after three weeks of placement. The installation of these weapons in Cuba had put US for the first time in a danger zone, which means that the US was now under the close and near range of fire by the USSR weapons or missiles. As you can see in the map that Cuba was quite close to the US territory and Florida was quite close to Cuba. So that is why it was a danger for the US for the first time that the American mainland was under the threat of a direct attack. So far America had enjoyed geographical isolation and it was never severely attacked other than the attack on the Pearl Harbor. As you can see the map shows the distance between Cuba and the mainland of the US. Now once again look at this map. This map is showing location of US, Cuba and USSR respectively. You can see how far USSR is on the right hand side of the US whereas Cuba is quite close. And if you see at the geography or the location of the US, it remained isolated because of the vast ocean expansion on both the sides. However, with installation of the missiles in Cuba, US for the first time came under the direct threat of any direct attack from major country. When the US President Kennedy came to know about the nuclear installations, he ordered American warships to intercept or stop any Soviet ship heading to Cuba. Although Kennedy and his advisors were very careful to avoid any full scale war, particularly nuclear war, but they were also determined to stop Russia 
and ask Russians to remove missiles and nuclear weapons from Cuba. This strain or clash between the two is known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Although it may look like, but the Cold War was not simply a matter of military alliance, balance of power or demonstration of power rivalries. But it was in fact a real ideological conflict where both of them were trying to put forward the ideology they advocated for as superior to the other ideology. This conflict was a difference of opinion over the best and most appropriate way of economic, political and social life in any nation or all over the world. But both of them were constantly building their military might also. And that was the reason both of them were being threatened by each other's military might. Briefly stating, the West headed by the US represented the ideologies related to liberal democracy and capitalism as political and economic organization. Eastern Bloc headed by the Soviet Union represented ideology of socialism and communism. In the process of asserting their respective ideologies, the USSR and the US emerged as two superpower, rivals to each other, with the capacity to destroy each other. But interestingly, they also understood that nuclear attack on each other would cause massive destruction and will prove costly for any of them to bear at costs. Thus, both the rival power, although had nuclear weapons that could have destroyed each other, but both of them understood the price they have to pay for holding this war. None of the sides wanted to take risk of war as the political gains from the war were far less and justified as compared to the destruction the war could have cost them or caused them. And in such a situation, it could have been impossible to declare any one side as winner in the event of the nuclear war. This negative motivation or negative motivational influence is called as logic of deterrence. The dictionary meaning of deterrence is that something that deters or restrains or stops. The concept of deterrence can be defined as the use of threats by one party to convince another party to refrain from initiating some course of action. It is a strategy for combining two competing goals. The first goal is countering an enemy and the second goal is avoiding war. In academics, it has been interpreted in various ways. But the basic concept of deterrence is quite simple. It means that an enemy will not strike if it knows the defender can defeat the attack or can inflict unacceptable damage in retaliation or cause equal if not more damage to you. In this case, both the US and the USSR had the capacity to retaliate against the nuclear attack and cause equal destruction to each other. So neither of them actually wanted to initiate war. Both of them knew that their major cities, their industrial towns and their important locations will be the target of the enemy. The enemy can even target their weapon storehouses. And if these points are attacked, nothing will be left in them. Thus, the Cold War, despite being the intense form of military rivalry between the two superpowers, remained a Cold War only. The reason why do we call it as a Cold War is that because it never got converted into a shooting war, also called as a hot war. The Cold War era was full of tension, anxiety and strains. But the logic of deterrence prevented any full-fledged war. Somehow, fortunately enough, both the power blocs acted rationally and responsibly. And they understood the risk of military war. In this sense, the Cold War managed to ensure human survival and avoided destruction. Now, let us look at the dynamics of emergence of these two power blocs. The two powers had a group of nations aligning with them. Wherever a nation was tied to a superpower, it remained under the protection of the superpower to limit or control the aggression or the influence of the rival bloc. You may think that why did small states align themselves with the superpower? The answer is that smaller states in the alliance joined the superpower for their own interest and purpose 
what was this interest? This interest was that with aligning of superpower in return of their association with superpower, the smaller states got promise of protection. They got military help, weapons, equipment, and also economic aid to counter their local rivals, that is, the regional neighbors with whom they had their competing differences. The East West divide on the basis of ideologies and alliances with the two power blocks appeared first in Europe. The countries of the Western Europe were part of the Western alliances and the countries of the Eastern Europe joined the Soviet group. That is why they are also called as Western and Eastern alliances. The East-West alliance system headed by the two superpowers divided the entire world into two camps in general and Europe in particular. In fact, Europe became the main arena of conflict between the two superpowers. The superpowers were constantly calculating their gains and they were continuously in a struggle to bring smaller states into their ambit or under their fold. After the end of Second World War, the Western Alliance or the Western Bloc was established as an organization called as NATO, that is North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO came into existence on 4th of April 1949. The organization was a system of collective defense where each state agreed to mutual defense in response to an attack on any party by another state. The member state declared that an armed attack on any one of them would be regarded as an attack on all of them. And in such a case, each member state is obliged to help the other. On the other hand, the Eastern Alliance was established by the Soviet Union through the Warsaw Pact. Warsaw Pact was signed in 1955. Its main aim was to counter NATO's forces in the west part of the Europe. It was a political and military alliance established in 1955 between Soviet Union and Eastern European countries. The members of the Warsaw Pact were Soviet Union obviously, Albania, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland and Romania. The world got sharply divided between the two alliances or two blocs. And this rivalry or this divide was visible almost in every walk of or sphere of life, political, economic, military, nuclear threats, etc. The Soviets formed their alliance to counter NATO and NATO was here to contain the spread of communism. Now let us look at the map of Europe to identify the countries of Eastern and Western alliances, that is NATO and Warsaw Pact. As you can see in the map, the country of the Warsaw Pact are Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Belarus, East Germany and this side of the red line that is you can see in the map. Whereas the NATO countries are shown in blue color. Now this particular map shows the way the Europe was divided into two rival alliances during the world war. The countries in the red color are part of the Eastern Alliance and the countries which are shown in yellow color, these are the countries of the Western Alliance, that is the NATO members. The red ones are the Warsaw Pact members. The green one are the countries which are communist nations, but they were not part of the Warsaw Pact. And the ones you see in gray color, they are the other countries, those who were outside of both the alliances. Now, if you look at the map of Europe, the two colors, blue and red, show you a sharp distinction between East and West Alliance the blue ones being part of the US alliance and the red ones being part of the Russian alliance. Take a look at the world map. The entire expanse, almost half of the earth was covered by the countries of the Warsaw Pact headed by Russia advocating the communist ideologies. And now if we fill in the color of the other countries, we see the dark blue countries being NATO members, the light blue countries being other allies to the US. They were not the members of the NATO organization, but they were aligning with the interest of the US. The red countries are the Warsaw Pact countries, whereas the lighter red ones are the countries which were socialist countries. They aligned with USSR, but they were not part of the Warsaw Pact. And the countries that you see gray in color were the non-aligned countries. We will discuss about non-alignment in the course of discussion of this chapter. 
To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this episode. In this episode, we discussed about the Cuban Missile Crisis, the entire history, the set of instances or events that led to development of Cuban Missile Crisis during the Cold War era. We also discussed about the moves made by the USSR and the counter moves made by the US, the geographical location of Cuba vis-a-vis -vis the US and the location of USSR. We discussed about the division of the world in East and West Bloc or the Eastern or Western alliances called as Warsaw Pact countries or the NATO members respectively. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about Iron Curtain and about the two power blocks and their influence on the world politics. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you. Thank you.